something intriguing has come in the post today. Is it a firm? It says be gentle with it. May I have a funny idea that I might know what this is? If someone else offered to send a strap on? You're open. <laughs> no, it's, um, I think it might be um, some quince jelly actually. Somebody offered to send me some. We haven't made any for a couple of years, have we? Well, a package. <laughs> oh, I, oh no. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it is. Oh, I don't know, man. Dead body. Eh? Dead body. A dead with a very small dead body, if it is. A dwarf. Eh? A dwarf. No, it's in a... Well, whoever it is has reasonable taste in whiskey, that's for sure. Eh? Milky coffee? Oh, yes, please. No, not yet. Right, I'm presuming there's a message inside. Yeah, that's definitely not... <laughs> that is going to be quince jelly. And a dwarf. Eh? And a dwarf. No, it's no dwarf. And a note. Quince jelly. Well, so, well, I think there's two. I might be about to make a little bit of a mess, Mrs. P. Sorry. Blame. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Right, so we have got two pots of quick jelly. Oh, and he's even put the... Um, uh, put the recipe on your friend. All right. Okay. Uh, right. I'm going to read this um, before I read anything out. Have you got your glasses? No, I have to go and get my glasses because I'm struggling now. Um, all I can say at the moment is Alan's because mum. It's not because I'm old. It's because I'm That's mature. Why you get out of bed this morning because you're old. <sighs> All right, look. I had a bit of trouble getting out of bed this morning. I had a bit of trouble getting into bed last night. We laid a load of um, land drain and six inch conduit water pipe yesterday. Uh, the idea was we were supposed oh. to. Are you taking the wash name out of me? Oh. Yes, she is. Oh, there's a little harp noises coming from the um, lounge. So unfortunately, my father was unable to help with uh, putting the pipe in because within two minutes of uh, him trying to help, he was on the deck. And um, Andy used the machine driver, not long had a knee replacement. So I think he struggled a little bit. So we ended up laying basically um, about 500 meters of pipe and it was hard work because we were doing it down a trench where all the support was at both sides 
and I managed to pull my neck and my back. So last night I was suffering and no one, no one in the house, no, all the girls were very, very sympathetic and they looked after me and they pampered me, you know, they looked, you know, I was like, they all, they all ripped the mickey at me for being old. Uh, so yeah, and this morning I, I struggled a little bit, but I've so far gone without any paracetamol. So anyway, I'm going to go and get my glasses. I'm going to read this letter and then I may or may not share this with you, depending on what's in there. And then we'll go on with the rest of the day. But I'm happy to say it's raining. Okay, it is raining out there. Uh, my poor guys are out working in it. I've had jobs I will do. And I've got to go and feed the cats in there. But um, right now, with my neck being a bit stiff, I don't really want to get it cold and wet as well because I know what will happen. I'll suffer. But anyhow. Alan's mum, who I will maybe do in a minute. Pauline, thank you. Because I really, really, really like quince jelly. Right, excuse me, I'll go and get my glasses. I'm treating myself, all right? Mmm. Mm. Right, so I have read this and I'm going to share it with you. So this is uh, from Pauline. We won't go into surnames, but thank you very much indeed, Pauline. And this is the recipe for making quince jelly. This is the stuff you have with your lamb or anything else you fancy. So this is a, a, something you just enjoy with the meat. So. So, uh, the recipe we have here is for three kilograms of ripe quinces. Uh, you will also need one kilogram of granulated sugar or 500 grams to every 600 milliliters of strained juice. We'll get to that bit in a minute. Paired rind and juice of two lemons. Uh, right, so you've got to wash your quinces well, cut them into chunks, remove any damaged parts, leave the skin on and the core in put into a large pan and just cover the fruit with water. Simmer until fruit is soft and pulpy. Uh, put pulp into the muslin supplied. Thank you very much. I didn't realize until I read this that this was a muslin for actually putting my um, quinces in, so thank you. Um, so you put all your pulp and everything into a muslin, tie it up and hang it above a, hang on, I'll read the measure. Uh, put pulp into muslin supplied and leave to drip into a large bowl or saucepan overnight. Overnight is best. Measure juice and pour into preserving pan. Stir in sugar to your taste, lemon rind wrapped in muslin and ju lemon juice. Heat slowly, stir to help dissolve the sugar. Bring to the boil rapidly, skim the scum off the top. I remember doing that. Uh, and that is when it changes color, the magic bit. Boil until it reaches setting point. Put, uh, put in warm jars, so you preheat your jars in the oven. Cover and seal and enjoy. So, uh, the jelly I have sent you was made in 2011. I lost my tree then. I'm very sorry to hear that. Last year I bought two new ones, so I look forward to more quince jelly and wine. Best wishes, Pauline, Alan's mum. Well, thank you very much indeed, Pauline. Um, as a lot of you know, I thoroughly enjoy my food. Um, and although you can buy quince jelly at the supermarket, there's nothing quite like the real thing. So, and that looks. Oh. Mm. When are we having lamb next, Jew? Oh, I can't actually hear it because the washing machine on, but. Oh, she says when we can afford it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Anyway, yeah, so next time we have lamb, eh? Okay, can I do that tomorrow? She's just I've got to go out to work and earn some money so we can afford a leg of lamb. Hey, I don't want to go now, it's wet. And I hurt. Apparently it's not all about me. It is what I hurt, so. Right, well on that note, uh, I'll leave that there. Um, whether or not I take you out with me when I feed the cattle, 
probably not because we are getting some um, nice gentle rain which is just what my grass wants but the camera doesn't like it so, and you've seen me feeding cattle enough times so you kind of know what's going on with that right then that note I'm going to finish my cup of coffee I'm going to edit another video because I've done Saturdays Sundays and now I've got to do yesterday's Mondays so on that note I'll see you later I love milky coffee. Shut up. Well, I've covered the house for 10 minutes. So the family haven't got to listen to me complaining about my backache. Uh, we're going to go look at some grass, see how it's going. But another quick look at my uh, May trees. So this is the reason I love them, because of the colour. No one yet has got that one from the Instagram picture. But maybe I'll give you a clue in a bit. Right. Well, if the grass was growing like the hedges, I'd be more than happy. I'm going to get complaints from over there now. You wait. Yeah, why is he out there and we're in here? Well, according to the footpath, we put nearly an inch of growth on in the last... Well, then I cut the grass. Saturday. So, four days. An inch in four days. Um, there is enough grass out here now that I could let the cattle out. The problem is I got, is I still got the bull, so he'd have to stay shut in, um, which is a bit tight, and I've got my TB test coming up in, what, 20 days? And I've got, an, I've got pretty much sure that at least one of the red cows, once I let her out, she ain't going to come back in again. And the last thing I want now is delays on TB because I can't get one in. So another 20 days of growth on this grass and it is going to be well ahead of them. So I'm very sorry, Carl. You're going to be let out really late this year. I'm not happy about it. But that's just TB. So uh, this this piece of grass is doing quite well. A um, bit of rain we're having today and last night. I think we've got a bit more tomorrow or next couple of days. If we get some sunshine again, then this should then go. This should be well away. But this is nice grazing level now. They would really enjoy that. Sheep are doing all right out there. I had to relent earlier and give that weekly number 11 a bottle. He got cold and wet, he was all hunched up, he was shivering, he was not happy. Um, he was quite happy to stay with mum once I'd given him a bottle. So, but, yeah. <sighs> Hopefully for not too much longer. Some of this is starting to get away now. It would be quite nice if I could make one of these fields into hay or haylage. That would be quite useful. I mean, that might be a kickback advantage of having the cattle kept in longer, that maybe I can keep the rotation and make one of these fields into some silage. If I do an early cut, and then uh, maybe throw some more fertilizer on here. Maybe, just maybe, we can make some grubbier and not have to make it all over here, the farm. Because if we get a clear test, it'd be quite nice if we can take all our um, year olds, our young cattle, over there because they should do well. And now the risk of TB over there has been reduced. I think it's worth the risk. Uh, yeah, it's just starting to come a bit more, and hopefully, this will start killing the moss off. But this is what we don't want. We don't want this stuff creeping buttercup. It might look pretty, but it's bitter, it's stalky, and the stock don't like it. Okay, so we're going to try something a bit different. I just reset the GoPro to um, 4K, 
and a mode called cinematic after realizing that I just shot another load in time lapse or time warp. So um, it's an issue I've got with this GoPro 8 camera because it's got a touch screen on the back and it's very sensitive. You can, although you can lock the screen, that's also a pain. The camera is so sensitive that if you touch it when you're moving the camera around, you end up changing the settings and sometimes you don't even know you've done it. Uh, so, do you know what? I actually like the physical, having to press the button to go through the menu for what you want. This touchscreen stuff is all very well and good, but in the environment that I'm using it in, it's a pain because I end up shooting a little video I can't use. Anyway, so this is being shot in cinematic, um, in 4K, and when I do the edit, I'm going to see what the comparison is like, and I'm also going to see what it comes out like um, in the final edit as it's gone through the software. Just out of interest, I've never used the 4K before, <coughs> but if it works, maybe I'll use it some more. Really enjoying all this blossom out now. The apples, the thorns, the apples, the horse chestnut, the may trees, the Judas trees, more crab apples, more hawthorn, loads more hawthorn. Um, it is a truly lovely time of year. Bees are busy, birds are busy, everyone's busy. I'm not quite so busy. So as an experiment, again for this, I probably won't use this Reddit in, I've noticed the camera or the software is pixelating when I do lots of quick turn rounds. Um, now I don't know if that's just the software on my computer or my computer is too slow or the um, graphics card isn't up to the job or if it's the camera, but I'll just use this bit for experiment. There you go. Well, pigeon meat is certainly coming up, but we seem to be full of <coughs> oak grass. So I reckon, um, although it goes against the grain really to cut it after I've been so desperate for grass, I might actually put the topper over this and just knock it back a little bit while we've got this wet um, and just see, I mean some of our new grasses are just starting to come up and germinate in there I want to make sure they've got enough light to get them away so uh, yeah otherwise the oak grass is going to just drown it out Managing grassland. Right, okay. Well, bit of wet, bit of sun, <clears throat> and I reckon we can get off this 10 acres. Two cuts, maybe 60 big bales a cut. I'd probably be quite happy with that. If I whack some fertilizer on there, a bit more. Uh, but oak grass has definitely taken over living stuff okay right it is just going five o'clock my back is killing me self-inflicted so i can't complain too much but i reckon a cup of tea would help maybe a piece of cake cake i think that's it i think the decision's made I gummed an ad about it. Do I keep it like it is, take an early cut of silage, or do I knock it off? I've got so many seed heads on varieties of grass I don't actually want, which is quite low. And all that is sucking energy out of the soil that I want put into leaf and not seed heads. I think the best thing I can do is knock this off and uh, encourage it to come back again. Um, I don't think it'll take long to come back. 
um, and I think it'll probably pay long term if I flail it off now or in the next day or so. Time will tell.